to work on. There's only four maps. Yeah. But what separates the teams often at this level is just what do they bring to the table? How do they play and what do they utilize? Skadoodle getting aggressive. We've kind of criticized Skadoodle in the past for being a somewhat dull player as the Jet, but it's not here. Skadoodle pops off and finds three. He charges down mid. And we talked about Cloud9. He's just going, okay, I was going to say, he's not going armor classic. He does go down to the Sheriff. Oh, opponent po spotted already. It's going to be another very quick round for Cloud9. Tense is already inside the cyber cage, peeking out. It's going to be the shots from Brax, but doesn't ring true. And the A side is open for a plant. But Spider on that previous round, continuing on this round. That's two kills of his own, five in total over two. People wanted to see him on a Phoenix, on a Duelist, on anything, as he's a great fragger and has been a great player in Overwatch, but I think seeing him as an Omen, he's definitely blossomed to when he first started in T1 to where he is now a lot more comfortable with the team and definitely putting those frags in as the Omen. Three on three retake. Dart about to come out from Days as he's jumping up and getting ready to fire. There you go. Start working their way through. Skadoodle has that off and he's sending shucks through the floor. They're running out of time. They desperately need to get in there and they do. It's because of great openers and there's Dazed actually finding another one. But no, time, though. no, they don't have this. They're all gonna die. Close. Oh no. Team's fighting for control of the scoreboard. T1 retains it for the time being. And Skadoodle's likely gonna have a feeding frenzy here in B main. He finds three. Days picking off one of his own. And now it's up to just one player. It's Vice. And he's so far disconnected from the play that there's not much that can be done. With just a classic, he's trying to set up a cheeky angle on the edge of this bush. Between two ferns. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go into the type of questions in that analytics that Zach Galifianakis would like to say, because I don't think we can say I, those kinds of things on here. <laughs> I have always wanted to do an esports show like Between Two Ferns. It would be so awesome. Somebody has to do it. That said, though, Vice picked off 5-3. to three. After that 30 round, an, uh, and you saw AZK able to shut down tens. So both of these two teams really stunning each other and really taking out the, the, the X effect that allows for these two teams to progress and dominate on a single map. There's the Hunter's Fury coming out towards Short, and Brax is trying to dodge it as best he can. I love that move. Shutting the door and then shadow stepping away. That allows Shinobi to shut the door and plant the spike. A bit of a ballsy move as it could have left the spike in a pretty rough position to try and get it back from. <laughs> but we find ourselves in a four on four regardless. Now the dart flushes Dazed back, glass pack in over top of the wall, and Mitch is going to pick off Dazed as well. As he comes through from the back side of that play, they weren't anticipating that pushing through from Garden. Now the window is still in place, and Mitch kind of gets stuck on the other side of the glass looking through. So it's a three on three. As the fight continues to volley back and forth, there's one in Helen. You're asking yourself, Skadoodle, can you just take that shot, please? But it's going to fall on the spider. It's been a hero thus far, finds one, but can't get the second. The double up position in Hell produces to start changing positions to try and come in and do some extra damage. The round should be T1s. Cloud9 mm -hmm. realistically should not find themselves back in this site. No, especially with Mitch down, the turret's not going to see much. You could turtle into the site for T1. You bring your opponents against you, especially that they're on an eco. Uh, you usually will see them kind of go for those last minute type of pushes in terms of exits too. But Brax is actually going to fight back. It's looking great for them so far to be a 9 to 5 scoreline. But Relics has different plans. A dink, but that's it. Then a 3 versus 1 to end things off. The Vice is just going to try to make it look expensive as he spots one the battle, the dance with Brax, the dink, and then the last bullet to get the wall bang from the sidewalk. It gets traded off. They did make it expensive, but T1... Very slow round. I mean, we said it. This is going to be what they do. We're down to the 35-second mark, and they still haven't made their way onto a site. They're finally starting to take control left. of mid, and now Mitch is in a position where he's got Skadoodle and one more around the corner, and Mitch has really slowed this down to make it that much more difficult. They're trying to get onto the site, but with 23 seconds left, they can't get into good positions. This is exactly what we said we'd be worried about, but hold on! P1 is fighting their way out of it, almost! Some heroic work coming in from Dazed. Yeah, with well, that type of play style for T1 and with the agents and the players that they have composing that lineup. But with this one, though, it's going to be another situation where they have Ecos or a Force Buy, and it's paying off in their favor. A Ghost and a Bulldog kill, a Frenzy in the hands, Tens trying to move forward. You We've seen a couple run. of shots, finally connects, but runs out of bullets so that Spider could actually trade it off. So they actually manage to get into the site. It's a three versus two. They have a lockdown from Mitch, though, to try to push him out. But that's a huge run, ultimate from the shadows. Twice never sees it coming. Spider for a 3K, looking for the four, but Mitch 
stays alive for a bit. 89 HP, still very doable, especially with the lockdown that was thrown first. No spike has been planted, so he could still get the angle in. They could still run back to the B side if they want to for T1, but you have AZK at left. 2 HP. No more abilities with the accession of the fault line, but they have to act quick. With 24 seconds left, they're still in the back of mid. I think they're still going to go towards A. And, and you have not to at moved. this point. You had an opportunity there, even still to that, you know, like the, the last few seconds. Where you ten sec just, ten oh, seconds oh, left. They got to go. I mean, they have to run. They have to quite literally run. And they're just barely going to get this spike down. I mean, this is the epitome of a last Five second planted. plant. 0.5 left oh, as the spike touches. One swarm grenade in the right position in this round doesn't happen. Yeah. That or Mitch. even a wall bang, right? The, the, yeah. the usual spots that you have, a, let's say, for example, the Cypher that plays that spot. If a trap wire was there or somebody that's playing that just as Mitch, literally as Sentinel that could also play a Cypher, knows about that wall bang position. If he was there and he was hearing that plant, wall bang, the round's over. That said, though, it's a different scenario. It's a two versus one. He makes it a one versus one. 11 HP versus two HP. He gets the hedge on to Don't AZK as well. Clutch just a two versus one. And C9 makes it nine to seven. All right, so I really Gosh. like the way that T not, T1 tried Escalated. to play that. Alarm bot too, which is what I like. I talked about this before. Sometimes you don't need to shoot it out. You put the cloud burst. So Mitch still comes into a surprise when he hears the door being broken. But Ten's already rotated towards the B side to get the first kill. They're looking for that trade. The turret spots him through the smoke. It's going to be the kill from EZK. Left. A four versus four. A trade off towards mid side from Shinobi to Spider. A three versus three now as Mitch has to come up huge inside the site. Nice flash from AZK. You see Mitch just still blinded. Couldn't do much about it. Spike planted. Spike does go down. This time it's a little bit faster of a play coming in from T1. But look at that. The distance shot from Vice. He's got that rainbow arc. Able to put the shock dart straight into the belly. It's now a two on two. Revealing area. With the position in B main, Brax is incredibly important. It's going to come down to his timing. Now that shock dart is huge, does great damage, but now Brax has to come in and save the day. If they get through into the U-Haul, they'll be able to survive a little while longer or the boathouse. Now the spike is planted on the other side of the box and they say that pros don't fake. Vice is going for it. He's got it close, but not today. Brax moves up too close. Vice has to pull up. Early round pickoff on Shinobi. There's the ult coming out. The Hunter's Fury is sending damage down range from Vice, but it's actually Tens who does the dirty work as the Blade Storm finds two. This aggressive play from Cloud9, putting T1 quite literally up against a wall. Skadoodle somehow fights his way out of it. He's still got time to go back to the rifle, has to switch to the pistol. Ooh. I think Vice might have two HP. No, it's one. The buy round that's coming in from T1 is, is scrappy. You can see some players on pistols, some on rifles. It's not exactly ideal. So they're going to be working in towards the B site off the Rolling Thunder. The Rolling Thunder actually misses. That Nano Swarm, oh my gosh. Rax left. takes so much damage. The Alarm Bot plus the Nano Swarm puts him down on 38. Now Mitch is only able to get the kill on the very soft target before being taken down. Did significant damage to Skadoodle. But the spike's been planted. It's a four on four. Get out of my way. We'll see what C9's able to do to try to get back into the site. A fault line coming out. Hunter's Fury as well being popped. Everything they've got is sent in that direction. Ooh. There's the pulses coming Not out from Daisy. Managing. And it's looking all but manageable here as... T it's been T1 that's been surprising them. Cloud9 <laughs> turtled up currently inside U-Haul. Here's the portal play coming out from T1 as they dash their way through and head over to B. <laughs> it's a brawl inside the portal as the shotgun only finds one kill. Relics 10's yeah, now coming amazing. through with the sheriff. He's this come works. back up for Mitch. It's working. It's a scrappy game thus far, and Cloud9 steals that round. As to retaliate and reply to the answer from T1 uh, from the, the, the win that slipped out of their grasp. And now they're going to do the same thing in retaliation. One enemy remaining. Mitch coming in with the Phoenix kill. Vice is there as well. It's down to Spider. T1 tried to repeat the successes of Cloud9 and say, anything you can do, I can do better. And Cloud9 says, well, that's a, that's a cute joke. Uh, but no. <laughs> that dart's going to spot out the position of the Omen, and that allows them to get into the site. Oh Potentially Skadoodle just cleans Tenzi's clock and gets onto the site. And in the meantime, they also used 
into the shadows to put Omen up on Balcony as well. You know, he does drop down, but T1's got sight control. 14 seconds left as the spike goes down. The knives from Skadoodle right on the money. He'll fly in with one more. Does he realize there's one still inside Vince? Nope, AZK's got it. That works. Solid push, but it starts with that. Both teams have been incredibly scrappy with the pistols and the force buys. And even though Cloud9 is at a player disadvantage, they've got two players you would want in this scenario, and that's one of them. Tens pops off and finds one more, but it's all up to Vice, and oh man, the timing turns his back as soon as Skadoodle peeks his head out. And now Skadoodle's got position with the op. Now Vice does go the other direction, and that's uh, awkward. Just peek and fire, peek and fire. Yeah, there you go. That actually works. I was going to say... How does this happen? No, how does that happen? I, I literally was... But it looks like it's going to be a B push. Now that nade pushes him straight into the fight. But there's tens right around the corner with the shotgun. Now this is something we've seen Cloud9 do. They love to play off this portal in mid. That collapse play. And it works out nicely for them as well. But Mitch pops the ult, runs into mid, gets spotted in the end. That allows tens to upgrade. But T1... Managing to regain and retain control of this B site, largely in part to how well Skadoodle is playing. That ult, so successful as the knives slice apart the defense. And now it's Shinobi, stuck in hookah, waiting for Vice to come through from spawn. We've got a player sitting in garden and two towards elbow. Shinobi's going to be spotted as he goes for the jump up. This recon dart's going to give them away as well, potentially. But Shinobi hide himself from it, and it's not going to make a difference. And again, Vice is stuck in that position with an operator, has no choice but to run. They're really taking control of the series versus Cloud9 so far, where economy continues to stay low for Cloud9, so they don't have a chance really to fight back on this defensive side. And now a big Hunter's Fury from Daze. It connects onto one, he connects onto possibly another. No, he was really close there on that short side. But it's still going to be Vice. Close corner gets the ding, but unfortunately, the weaker gun. The ding comes through, no kill, and AZ can't. But mostly because they've been pressured a lot by Cloud9 Blue on the extremities and on mid side. Early fights favoring T1 as Shower Control was the name of the game, but T1 delivers with some Drano to try and eliminate the blockage. Oh. Now that's a, that's an aid. Uh, you hate it. <laughs> the arc on that nade is awkward, but Relics goes for a lot of utility expenditure, and he's somehow still fighting and finding kills. He's got Spike down, but he's in a really awkward position. So you heard the port come through from Cloud9 as they've got this Spike locked down. It's just down to two players, and Cloud9 is throwing literally everything they have at that Spike. That's right. And now, because of that, they know two players playing towards showers. They can maybe focus on a two versus one later on the other side, but it's actually being played super far back with uh, Vice moving forward. But AZK, a nice first kill. They're trying to go for a peek off a curveball. They're actually taking advantage of it. Daze gets the second one, and just like that, it's a two versus one. Can Vice actually clutch it one more time? The spike left. is down. He's covering it. There's 30 seconds, so much time on the clock, and the Al Jones is going to be huge. He had to swing out on that and try to surprise one of the two. And it Shinobi will go ahead and secure that after taking the dart out. Tens has gotten into position here and just barely escapes around the corner. But this is not a position he can really get more than one kill from. You can see he's in this position, but he's got some backup. They might have a chance now. How is this coming what? together? Cloud9 finds themselves in a one-on-one -on -one as Tens has the classic. The heal oh comes God. in as well. The burst coming out, but no. Spider shuts it down. That should not oh. have happened, but it almost did. Cloud9 needed a big pissed around win, and it looked like it wasn't going to come together. But then in the end, you had this ridiculous 2v5 just cluster in hookah. And it came up the economy. But so far, it's just going to be an explosive take for Cloud9 inside hookah, pushing back T1, and T1's just going to wait for his teammates to rotate. Big showstopper to come through. Can they get the opening? It's going to be the paint shell still that gets the frag, but they're looking for the other chase. They're looking for the frag. It's still Skadoodle. He drops the spike. It's traded out. It's a four versus three. They're jumping outside of Hookah too, and C9 stays alive on this offensive. Tens with a second kill, leaving only one to go. It's going to be Daze with the Sheriff. Looking back here as I correct myself, not a Sentinel as an initiator. Looking back with the wall bang onto Mitch. Three versus one now. Paint shells onto the ground. Spike has been planted. He just wants to hurt the economy and a little bit of scratch damage to Brax is waiting with a shotgun yet again. 
Ten starts to move into position. AZK, the wide swing. Brax is there as well. Days chiming in with the ult. This is not exactly how you want things to go if you're Cloud9. The buy is scraped together by T1. But they've still found themselves in an advantageous position. Now, Mitch gets the easy kill onto AZK. There's an ult coming out from the attacking side. Good luck getting away from that one. Vice has that pretty much dialed in on Spider. Mitch backside of sight, and they've managed to bring things back left. to a much more manageable and honestly likely scenario. <laughs> they've got the Stifer, no HP at coming through from showers. If Brax took his time, I was wondering if he was going to be patient with that one. There's a curveball coming out. It's all going to come down to this. It's a 1v1. It's Mitch as Phoenix, Brax as Cypher, and Mitch, he's going to pop his ult. I like the move. Getting yeah. back into U-Haul as well because it gives him the escape ability. But Brax is actually playing this incredibly patient. He has to go for that. That means Brax now has a window of opportunity to actually get out onto the site. He's going to tap the spike and try and get oh, it no. halfway. Does he have it? No. <laughs> Out nine, continue to stay alive. Mitch lurking up short, does get sliced apart, but in the meantime, Relics is doing his own knife work over on the other side, but it's actually with the rifle, so that pun makes no left. sense. Ignore what I said, I'm an idiot. It's down to just one, though. <laughs> it's Skadoodle, who's got the ult popped, and oh my god, dude, deletes Relics as he jumps out of the portal. Skadoodle is feeling it, but Shin, T1 has read this because they've seen this before. They've seen these lurk plays from Mitch where he's the only one on the site. So they've actually pushed through from short and they're gonna get a backstab kill on device. That's Skadoodle who is holding it down. So Mitch is gonna have to go through the portal and try and fight back with that spider already coming Ooh. through from Hookah. Everything is falling apart and it's all onto relics. This is just really well read by T1. Unit is now working towards this Hookah side, trying to split into B, but look how aggressive T1 is on their end. And they get the first kill on device. They're double peeking now after, but they do not spot a second kill from Spider. That now puts Cloud9 Blue pushing inside the site. A recon dart doesn't spawn anybody yet. A showstopper to try to clear out the site too. It's gonna have to be the retake game for the defenders, but Skadoodle still stay alive, stays alive inside the site. Spider going to work. It's all up to two players. Tens inside the site. Relics as well. You can't think of two other better players for Cloud9 to try to keep the dream alive. But a shock dart that gives and blows the position away from Daze. A kill attempted not in favor of Tens. And Daze gets the last two kills. The wall bang and T1 